from the UK's perspective, we have our own unpredictability to deal with as um, Brexit draws closer and closer. What we do know at this point in time is that whether it's on exit day or if there is a transitional period agreed on the expiry of that transitional period, once the UK leaves the European Union, the sanctions, the EU sanctions that are currently in place will continue to apply as they are unchanged until a government minister changes either the underlying framework or tinkers with the lists. We had the Sanctions and Anti-Money Laundering uh, Act that came into force over the summer. Once those provisions become operational, it's envisaged that the ministers will do exactly that. They will adopt regulations that will designate people as subject to sanctions, that will grant exceptions, that will allow licenses to be issued, etc. So effectively we'll see sanctions being adopted and administered in very much the same way as they are now in the EU, but on a domestic uh, stage instead, without the need for the government ministers to comply with the normal restrictions of EU law, such as, for example, that any exceptions to sanctions should be interpreted as restrictively as possible, etc. And finally, and importantly, from a compliance perspective, the UK regulations that are adopted under the Act will determine what reporting obligations apply and what the penalties are when you get things wrong. We're not expecting to see much of a dramatic change in terms of how, how breaches are punished or how they are enforced, but we may well see changes to the reporting obligations, uh, which at the moment apply to a relatively limited subset of regulated businesses and professions, as well as the financial sector. Uh, that may well expand. It only applies at present to breaches of EU financial sanctions, but again, that would be a point that um, could easily be expanded to cover a much fuller range of sanctions violations. The immediate practical challenges of a change in sanctions policy or sanctions law um, is perhaps less than you would think because the, the practical problems are always going to be um, a constant. You will always have a problem working out what policies and procedures your company should be adopting internally to ensure that you are compliant. And this is a problem precisely because there's so little guidance, there's no legal uh, test for exactly what those policies and procedures, systems and controls should look like beyond the um, extent to which you can get some uh, regulatory input on general anti-financial crime standards. Um, but there, th that is unlikely to change for good reason. It's not meant to be a one-size-fits-all. It's meant to be a tailored policy and that, by definition, can never be dictated from above. That's problem number one. Problem number two is that you always will have a problem knowing who you're dealing with, whether that's your customer, whether it's a third party, uh, or indeed um, someone one or two steps removed from you. Um, beneficial ownership is hugely problematic and um, one commentator has described identifying the beneficial owner as in many cases harder than playing Pokemon Go and in this day and age um, particularly in the UK where you can set up a company it doesn't have to have a UK presence it can have a corporate director established in an offshore jurisdiction, etc., um, these these um, companies can be set up largely 
overnight or uh, at, at any rate at very uh, fast pace. And to keep up with changes uh, in real time is a struggle. What you do get if there is um, dramatic change in law or policy is a compounding of those practical problems, but in essence, they, they remain unchanged. <laughs>